Nothing new, Lieutenant. Everything in order, Captain. All right. It's good to see you again, Garnet. How are you? After you, sir. you, Lieutenant. What's going on in here? Captain? You there, Captain? Gentlemen, the facts speak for themselves. There is no room for doubt that this man standing before you entered the command headquarters at two o'clock in the morning with the sole intention of stealing the entire payroll of the garrison, which he must have known was in the safe. Evidently, the captain, being awakened by a noise, surprised the accused in the very act of stealing, and a struggle ensued in which the captain ripped a button from his attacker's uniform. Then, a moment later, he succeeded in striking his attacker with a blunt object, even though, as you all know, he would die moments after of a knife wound brutally inflicted by the accused. It's not true. If I'd been the thief, the strong box would still be in the office. Why accuse me of taking it? I was found unconscious. That fact implicates you perfectly. And this court can see just how perfectly. 
It can see for itself the means and the motive by which you planned and executed this robbery, but unfortunately for you, you were knocked unconscious by the captain before you could get away with your accomplices. We know how they got in because you had a key. But, Sergeant, the most conclusive evidence and that which will hang you is a small brass button, the button still missing from this uniform and found firmly clenched in the hand of the murdered captain. I therefore demand that this military court pronounce a verdict of complete guilt for the murder of Captain John Davis and complicity in the senseless slaughter of the guard Frank Morgan and that the accused be condemned to death by hanging. <laughs> Sorry, I've done everything I could. I'm afraid Pastor Madison won't get here before sundown. It's a long way from Fort River. Well, I guess it can't be helped, Lieutenant. Just as long as he gets here before dawn tomorrow. Tony, please tell me something. Why does it have to be that pastor? Because he's known me since I was a kid at Cherry Hill. Because he's able to tell the folks there that I'm Worthy to be the son of Major Garnet Still, who died in Pastor Madison's arms at Gettysburg. Then the army's just a fraud. That's the way it's going to stay till the time that justice proves me right. You forget I was the one that got you those stripes. We had quite a fight that time. You were? Yeah, I remember. Well, I want you to wear them now. since I was a kid. I've longed for the day that I could put on this uniform and to be something I could be proud of. I know that. You can be proud. I'm sure that if you could only have a new trial, you could prove your innocence. There isn't much time. Oh, God, have I the right to do this thing? Help me to know if it's right. Or would I be causing an even greater wrong by doing this? I must help a boy who I know is innocent. You must see why there's no other way. Help me, Father. Quickly, take off your things and put this on. Now, wait. You can't do this. Hurry, there's no time to waste. Listen to me, boy. Listen carefully. You must prove your innocence. Don't expect it to be done for you. But you can't let hate embitter you. Promise me I won't be sorry I helped you, as almighty God is our witness. What about you? How will you explain it all? I have my conscience. And above all, my faith.
This land belongs to me. I know this is your land, Silent Wolf. I know. You're quite a shot. I can hit a Skylark when it's flying. Skylarks don't wear guns. <laughs> Why is this? I've done nothing. I want the names of the men who were with you when you robbed Fort Jackson. I know nothing, nothing of Fort Jackson. and another one, a third one, only I don't know his name. I tell the truth, I don't know what his name is. None of us knew that. He was always masked. And the other ones? Frenchy. He thinks only of fancy clothes. He has a mustache, and he always hides his gun inside a big gray hat. Is that all? Martin Clemson, you catch in saloon. Plays cards all day. Goes one saloon, then another. Plays... Cards. Oh. You should never bite off more than you can chew, my friend. This is the main street of Akela. This is the sheriff's office. And here's Anderson's bank. 
And Vic will keep an eye on the sheriff until exactly 11.30. And that's when the four of us come into town from two different directions. Tom and Jim, you'll come in from the south. As soon as you get in town, you're going to stir up some trouble. Make a big ruckus. Because we want you to attract the attention of as many folks as possible. Vic, that's where you come in. You're going to take care of the sheriff, make a run for it out on the north road, and try to get half the town coming after you. It's risky. I know it. While you're doing that, Jeff and I'll come into the place. After everything's clear, Jeff and I'll break into the bank. And when we're both finished, we'll bust out in a big hurry. Got it? Where do we go after? San Pedro, if he ain't dead. What's the matter with you? You realize there's a pile of gold just waiting for us in the bank? You wear that, Vic. There must be at least seventy or eighty thousand dollars just sitting there. Ah, uh, there's one thing I'm worried about. Suppose something goes wrong and I have trouble with that sheriff. Oh, talk sense, man. Who'd you expect would be sheriff in a grimy mud hole like uh -huh. a Kayla? A fat old whiskey cuss with a rusty Winchester. He's always scared of a job before he ends up doing it. The sheriff will be easy. Wait till Jeff gets back from town. We'll see what he says. What the hell's the matter with you? I told you there was $80,000 in that bank. You all want me to hand it to you, is that it? Five down, Riff. It's not that we're afraid to take chances. It's just that we don't want any on this. It's Jeff. All right, Jeff. Now tell us. You boys want to know who the sheriff of Akela is? Who is it? Bill Manners. Bill Manners? Damn, why the hell did it have to be him? <laughs> Whiskey smelling cuss, eh? What I tell you? You guys can try it, but not me. Manners has the kind of pistol I wouldn't want to meet. I'd fancy only the... Oh, I know! Of... I know the man who can get that sheriff. There's somebody who can make target practice out of our pal, Bill Manners. Some Indian with a bow and arrow is going to get him. The rattling kid. You going to talk to him? Sure. And just why should he help us out? Why not? It's only a question of our paying him well. And I'm able to. We can cut him in on the take. How'd he get to him? Send him a postcard? You know, I'm the only one that can find him. <laughs> you guys wait here. Jeff and I'll go in first. Before he went down there, he didn't want anybody to bother him. Now you know him. Oh, yeah, I know. But I'm gonna talk to him anyhow. You know, if I were you, Migo, I wouldn't advise you to. <laughs> Don't worry about your amigo. Them two's almost brothers. Ah! 
They don't look like brothers, though. Brothers? You know, I just had a hell of a thought. They must have had a mother. Who's that? Riff. Have you forgotten? Your cousin. Come out in the open so I can look at you better. Who's your friend? Jeff's with me. Wanted to meet you. Yeah. I wanted to meet you. Fine. Stay where you are and talk. But make it fast. Now, why have I got you two here? Oh, now, I'm your, your riff. Don't tell me now that you've forgotten. I haven't forgotten. I've got no need of you or your news of the family. Oh, I know, Tony. A friend. You need a friend. Come on, gents. All matter of bets except. Dollar says we're at the kitchen. Here's two dollars. I'll bet we have to draw a straw to see who goes down to collect the bodies like all the other time. Two dead. One dead, one wounded. I say that neither one of them be shot, so I want to. Oh, por favor. Go oh, on. Uh, <laughs> all right, put your penny in. But if you lose, don't blame me. <laughs> hey, Joe. Better go out and find Ben. Tell him I'm gonna need the funeral wagon right away. Frank? Better get over to Dave Wilder and tell him we're gonna have to have two coffins. Better make them long ones, I said two. I can't help it, like the place kept clean you know. Can't just leave those two down there. Beer won't taste too good after a while. Understand? I've won! Olé! Olé! The Rattler! It's simple. All you gotta do is take care of the sheriff, and then get away. But you gotta do it at 11.30 exactly, and we gotta be sure of it. How do we split? Well, there's plenty of time to think about it. Half of it is mine. Nothing to think about. <laughs> How much you figure that leaves us? The other half. Take it or leave it. There's five of us. You think that's a fair way? All right, now wait, kid. You can have it. But it's just that, well, if you want it, then it's yours. One half of the money. Any objections, you guys? Ah, oh, but surely, you're worth it, my friend. 
pleasure. <laughs> He's a fine fella. Boy, I could sure use a drink, couldn't you? Penis, bring us out a little whiskey. We're going to have a party. Wait. Now, you get me, kid. The bottle is for me, you, and everyone. But Enos? <laughs> Morning, Doc. Well, you're up early, Sheriff. Everything come out all right? Yep, they're doing fine. They? That's right, twins. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> if this keeps up, Akela will soon be a city. And I'll never get a good night's sleep again. for breakfast. Excuse me, you did say a beer, didn't you? some eggs anyhow. handsome this morning. My, my, my. I suppose you'd say the same if I were... You know, I... Tony? Well, Mr. Turner. What a surprise. What the devil brings you to New Mexico? Why oh, I get around. I had no idea that you taught in a Kayla. Eh? Well, how would you know? Sit down. Sit down and tell me everything. How's your family? Pa's been dead for some time now. I'm sorry. And you went into the service? I'm wearing civvies. I know, but... But you were the one who couldn't wait till you got into uniform. Dreams have a habit of not coming true sometimes. It's not so bad. If you don't have too much imagination, believe me. Sometimes I think about school so long ago. I assume you've got some work. Sort of. 
What kind of work? Business. I have to get going. Mr. Turnovin, great seeing you. Where are you running, son? I have no time for any of your speeches, Mr. Turner. You talk about the time I used to dream when I was a kid. When I think of nothing except the day I'd be able to be a general. Well, I never became a general. Everybody has their dreams, don't they? Wouldn't you like to stay and talk? I don't have time. Now I'm telling you, Sheriff, this is no time for Negroes being allowed to vote. You can't say it'd be good for them. Do you imagine what would happen to the white vote? Why, you're not even listening to me. Now something's the matter with you today. It's the buzzards, isn't it? You think I'm worried about it? No, no, no. Can't you just calm down, Abe? President Grant knows what he's up to. The president? Yankee. Hey, Sheriff. I ain't finished yet. Excuse me, Abe. I've got things to do, so we can settle this later. Everything goes all right, we'll get the loan. I'll do everything I'm able to. The bell's rung. Aren't you going to be late for school? to see him. What'd you say, John? You know perfectly well what I said. Hurry. Otherwise, he won't be out till 12.30. Come on. Oh, be careful. You must up my dress, John. <laughs> Going in already? Yes, I suppose it's time. Yes, it is. You don't come to town very much, do you? It's very hard because I'm always working at home. Hey, you've become quite a young lady. <laughs> Am I wrong or do I see you blushing? I was hoping you'd notice my hair. One day, if. You said if? Oh. I said I was going to come to your house one of these days and see if I, and see if I can find out why your brothers don't work harder in school. Oh. Yes, maybe soon. But when, this week? 
Yes. If you like. I want to speak to your father. I think he should know about this. I'll warn my daddy to do his studying, too, before you come. Now, uh, I, I know it's a large sum of money. Still, it's only a loan, Mr. Anderson. But I needed to buy some supplies and seed to get ready for the first rain. Yes, I know. Now, you said that you had 75 head of cattle, isn't that right? Yes, but, well, I won't be honest with you. I'm afraid that I'm going to find that a few will have died before I get back there. You good land, that's the trouble. I'd say that you're more than entitled to have a loan on it. And I want to give you help, but... 600's about all I can do. It's awful little. I'm a widower with four children. What do you suppose I can do with Damn it, I know you've got a family. That's something you don't need to tell me, I know. What can I do? We get requests from dozens of others like you in the same conditions. Our bank is not equipped for that. You must have a great responsibility. Well, we mustn't worry too much. The Lord always takes care of his own. Thank you anyway, Mr. Anderson. Sam Scott, sit down. I'll give you 750. More is impossible. Say this to Mr. Scott. Thank you. You're a fine man. Watch the cattle, Sam. It's all you've got. Don't let them die. Don't worry. I'll take them to Grayson Lance and take us. It's a long way. I pray to God that we get some rain. Thanks again. <laughs> Think you can do it? You mean kill the sheriff? Why not? I tell you something, between you and me, I wouldn't be too sorry if they massacred each other before we got into town to clear the way for us. What are you driving at? That cuss, he gives me the creeps. He's always got that crazy look in his eyes. And I know he doesn't trust us much. And when he gets mad, I've seen it happen too often. We're through. It's like blowing out a couple of matches. <laughs> Ever. Hope you never get to see it. I try to test it. But if you ever get him riled, God help you, poor sap, because that's your last second. But he's our friend once he's six feet under. Now, until then, we just wait. Come on, Jose. Hurry, I think it's almost lunchtime. Si, senorita. Buenos dias, Sheriff. Bill, you here already. Wait, I'll see what's ready in the kitchen. No, not now. I didn't come for that. I just wanted to ask if you'd seen any more of the stranger that was sitting over there this morning. No. There's nothing wrong, is there? No, it's nothing. But anyway, if you happen to see him, send for me. Oh. Wait a minute, Pa. I'll give you a hand. Hi, Sheriff. Morning. Well, look who's here. Morning, Sheriff. Here, let me do that. Younger than both of you. Well, I guess that's what's meant by the strong arm of the law. <laughs> Sheriff, you can always have a job on our farm. If you like, we'll be needing a hand. Bill, I was wondering if you could ride out to our place Wednesday. If you can. I'm calling a meeting of all the cattlemen. I hope I'll be able to convince them to graze their cattle in Texas. It's the only thing we can do to save them before it's too late. Yeah, I'll be coming. I don't know about the others, but I think you might be right. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, it might work, but we'll have more time to talk about it. Very well. So much for geometry. Now then, Baxter, what are the borders of New Mexico? Well, New Mexico is bordered by Colorado in the north, Oklahoma and Texas in the east, Arizona in the west, New Mexico and Texas in the south. That's all, sir. Fine. Return to your seat. Quietly, please. Class, quiet now. 
Now, class, I want you to meet an old friend of mine. He was my pupil in Cherry Hill. Tony Garnet. Now listen carefully. I mean to demonstrate to you how well he's learned. Tony Garnet? In what year was the death of Julius Caesar? You seem to have forgotten that my pupils stand when answering the question. Well, exactly when was the death of Julius Caesar? The Ides of March. That's in 44. Good. <laughs> Shh, class. <laughs> You'll never forget. He was forced to write it 500 times. I don't imagine he remembers his offense, though. But a child's petty offenses are easily forgotten. Well, we'll finish early this morning, I think, in honor of his visit. Class is busy. You interrupt my class as you did in that manner. You have no excuse for that. Boy, you've forgotten where you are. I'm sorry. Now leave right away. Hey, it's all right. You may be a little surprised, but you're the only ex pupil who's ever come back to visit me. No one's going to bother you here. I know, but it's better not to break an old habit. I might forget it once when I shouldn't. Tell me the truth, Tony. Why didn't you go into the army? I was in the army. Four years. Then I left. But I... The charge is murder. But I didn't kill anybody. I ran away. I see. What have you been doing? Anything? Oh, a bit of this, a bit of that. And you came here to New Mexico for business only? That's right. I'm going to hold up the bank. Sorry. I was wondering if there was any of your money there. Not even a dime. I managed to live on just what I'm able to make. I'm sorry, Mr. Turner. Another one of those old habits. What did you tell me for? That I'm going to hold up the bank? Because you can't do anything about it anyway. Even if I tell the sheriff? I'm looking for him myself. To put a hole in him. I won't make a move till he draws on me. Then I'll fire. This isn't you, Tony. I have to be leaving, Mr. Turner. It's been great seeing you and having the chance to talk about old times. But things have changed now. Tony, it's not too late to go back if you want to. You said yourself you were innocent. Maybe if you give yourself up... It's too late. There's a price on my head for everything I've done since. Tony, I have rich friends here. I'll borrow as much as you need. I'll give it all to you. Why? Because I have faith in you. It's your life. Let me give you this chance. No. Seconds from now, you'll die. You can't outdraw him. Nobody can, I know. He's not faster than I am. Have you ever seen that man shoot? Never. But I know he wants to go on living. Where I don't give a damn. Do you think that, Tony? That's what I think. 
Life or death, it's all the same to me. Wait! You're not gonna rob that bank. I forbid you. Now tell me, Pa, you load any more stuff, aren't you afraid you'll break your wagon? Don't worry, friend, we're all finished. <laughs> and that pretty little filly, what's her name? That's no business of yours, sir. Watch out, you'll make him angry. <laughs> <laughs> We live a long way from here. We'd better be on our way. Wait a minute. Before you go, that pretty little girl's got to tell me what her name is. My name's Jill. Is it all right if we go now? Jill, eh? <laughs> Mighty nice name you got there. Don't you think so, boys? Tony Garnet, alias Rattler Kid. Well, I asked you a question. They've kidnapped Jill Scott. What? Jill Scott? Hurry, Sheriff. Two men have been wounded. Old man Scott's been shot. Oh, old man Scott. Get out of town, Garnet, before I get back. I'll give you an hour, Garnet. Bring my horse, Jake. to ourselves. Maybe this is going to be easier than we figured. I told you so. We'll even have time to take a nap in the bank, huh? <laughs> Where do we put him, Doc? In the schoolroom. I'll be right there. Who is it? Scott, oh my God. How did it happen? Three men grabbed the girl and then they rode out of town. Anyone see which way they went? Yeah, they went over them hills there. I hitch that horse. I'm going. I'm going. Yeah. Oh, Chester, Fred, you men, follow me. Nobody else leaves town. Come on. Yeah! Oh, no. 
Wow, that ain't nice. <laughs> Jose. We can do no more without a doctor. You've got to ride to Deming and fetch Dr. Gardner. I will, but that's a very long ride. You think that he could make it, Miss Helen? I'm afraid there's no choice. Then I hope that God rides with me. Mexico's where they're hidden. I guess so. They'll have to camp for the night first. When that happens, we'll move in on them. He'll be fine, if Dr. Gardner can get here in time to save him. Martin. I'm afraid the bank's been robbed. Yes, I know it was. There was no way to, to stop. You know what that means for Akela. <sighs> of course. Some of my clients have... You know I'm completely broke. Because last spring, when I got that loan from the National Bank, I mortgaged each and every holding I had. Now, we're all of us ruined. I knew you would make love like this. Almost from the first moment I saw you, I knew it. That's why I didn't say anything to you when you said, this is the place all of you would go to right after the robbery. Why are we all supposed to meet here? You forgot. Or maybe you pretend to have forgotten. You know very well you were supposed to meet at the Mexican border. But I don't care why you came. Would you help me? I have a feeling that your friend is coming to call on you. There you are. Who gave you that box? Oh, I've had it for a long time. It has only sentimental value. My first present from Riff. He told me he was going to fill it with jewels and gold. You wait, he said. Well, I waited a long time, but I never saw any. Hey. He stole it from you, is that it? Not the box. My life. You have your whole life before you. You're young. I warn 
behind you. You see this? When they see this little white body tied up near an anthill and ready to be eaten alive, they'll rush into our hands. It sure is a pity to waste her on a bunch of bugs. But first, we eliminate some of those friends of hers. Don't worry. We have plenty of time to teach her some tricks. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe she'll like it. <laughs> I told you both what to do. Now get going. Challenging both of you. You kid. Now come on, kid. Stop your clowning. Get down. Give me the money. He's the one. He shot at you. It was all his idea, I swear. Tell him, go on. Why did you cry as long as you're at it? I'll try you. I've been wondering just what the color of your blood is. Get off. Now we're quits. You and me will never be quits. Now it's our turn. The time's run out. You expect I could shoot you? You suppose I could shoot my own flesh that way? No. So throw away your gun and get off your horse. <laughs> you want to try that again? Come on, get down. You disarm me. We'll soon fix that. We can use these. How many times have we watched Mexicans fight with these? They slice each other with the thorns, remember? 
pick it up. What's the matter now? Are you afraid to fight your own flesh and blood? Or just afraid? for you. That's why I didn't finish you off now. What is it? Are you the doctor? Yes, but I'm in the middle of eating. What's the trouble? The doctor the cattle is murdered. A man is shot bad. You must come. That's all you have to do to wipe out everything you've done, huh? Rattler kid. Why did you bother to save me? I've already told you. I want you alive.
Start walking in front of me. just like a fool. The kidnapping was just to throw me off. How many were there? Three of them. One of them, I'm sure, is the one you talked to out there. He's the one they shot at. Give me a fresh horse. You want to come along? Sure. Bill, what's the point of going? I don't think you should go. You got a reason why not? I'm waiting for your answer, Alex. Tony Garnett's my friend. He's innocent, I swear to you. Friend? You've got some mighty peculiar friends, Alex. He was a student of mine in Chair Hill. He's a good person. Let's go, man. Wait. Listen to me, Bill. Tony really had nothing to do with it. You don't understand at all, do you? Your friend is wanted for murder. Bill, do you think you could arrest him if you returned all the money stolen from the bank? He won't come back. He made a reputation on the name of Rattler Kid. He won't change. He's someone I've always had faith in. I know he'll be back. Listen carefully, Alex. I'm going to find Garnet and bring him back. And we're going now. No, Bill. No! It's settled. Uh, you don't know what will happen. He moves so fast, you can't defend yourself. Don't you see that? He's fast. Faster than you. Oh, be smart. I'm the law here, Helen. And we've got trouble. She knows that, Bill. But she's seen him shoot. I know he's innocent, and we must give him one more chance to show that. He's broken the law. But not here in the Kayla. Don't do it. All right, I'll give him till sunrise. Then I'm going after him. Sorry, but I need your horse. Don't do it, son. I'm a doctor. My man's been shot. I must go immediately to Akela. Who is it? Alex Turner is the man's name. He was shot in a bank robbery hours ago. The doctor's been killed. Well? Let me think. Too many things depend on this horse. I'm afraid we've lost a lot of time, Martin, but I promise you we'll find them. We'll have to move fast. Morning, Helen. You look nice. You look mighty nice. Bill, I've been, you, when you first, I... The doctor! There's the doctor! The doctor just rode in. Oh. Where 
Where is he? Here, Doctor. Well, he doesn't look too bad at first glance. Uh. Uh. Get in there. Uh. Why, he's one of the bank robbers, I'm sure of it. Nobody touches this man. His life belongs to me. I bought it with this. $80,000. That's a hell of a lot of money to pay for a life that's not worth anything. Well, I'm paying it, Sheriff. For something called honor. <laughs> Ask him. He'll tell you all about it. <laughs> It's true. I'm the one. I robbed the bank and the safe at Fort Jackson. Fort Jackson? Sheriff? I was the one who killed Captain Davis. The kid's innocent. Is that enough for you, Sheriff? I had to do it, Mr. Turner, after what you did for me. Now we're quits, you know. Forget about him for once. Now you look into my eyes and you forget your duty for one time. Because a lady that catch in gin so fast around here, you ain't gonna be safe neither. Stop. 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 